Today we're doing porch and home DIYs. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Number one is a floral clock box. This is going to be a thrift flip. So I found this little box. Pretty sure there was a clock on the inside, but the back wasn't there and the insides weren't either. I'm gonna use a piece of floral foam or styrofoam and some white chalk paint and a brush. This is a little window cling and then a bunch of whatever flowers you choose. I'm gonna take this piece and paint it white. Now it's had a good scrubbing, so it's nice and clean. And now I'm just going to take this chalk paint and make sure it's in all the cracks and all the grooves. I want it to have two coats of a nice full coverage and then we're going to distress it. You know, because I like my rustic farmhouse cottagey look. Once it is dry completely, I just dry brush the handle on the top. Then we'll move on to the next step. Now you can certainly spray paint the inside if you like, but it doesn't bother me, so I'm going to leave it as is. I'm going to take a piece of this styrofoam and put it right on the inside and press it down onto the bottom. I want it to be close to level with the, um, the opening on the front so that I can put my flowers in there and you'll be able to see them. I'm going to trim everything down so that it fits inside the box where we can see it in the front. And I'm kind of just putting in, putting those in in just like a little angle but you can do it any way you want to. Um, if you have an old clock at the house that doesn't work anymore, you can just gut it, take the stuff out of it, and you can make something pretty with it. And I know um, you can find things like this at lots of thrift stores, so you might be able to find something if this is inspiring you to make one of your own. Now, I'm just gonna pull these flowers around. They're on wire, so they're easily trimmed down and movable, and I can position them exactly where I want them. You can also use a little hot glue to, you know, maybe stick the petals down on the outside if you need a little more control. So I'm just gonna continue to fluff around here till I get it how I like it. Now I'm gonna distress it. You can do your distressing first if you would like, but um, I got excited about my flowers, so I went ahead and did that first. You can use a sanding block like this. You can use a piece of sanding paper if you would like. You can use probably a steel wool, a wire brush, anything that you want to distress your piece. And if you don't want to do this, you could also use some type of an antiquing wax if you would like to do that. So for the smaller areas, I'm just going to use this paper and I've just got this uh, folded kind of to a point and I'm using the point of it to go around the edges and the ridges. I'm going to do that on the top. You can see how I'm distressing it here. I want to take a minute to thank Sammy from Unicorn Dust Designs. I was part of her Spotlight Saturday Challenge and I have some videos over there on her channel which I will link below so you can go check it out over there. Thank you Sammy so much. I really enjoyed it. So now to put the window cling down, I'm just going to use a little bit of my glue stick, rub it in with my finger a little bit, and then place this piece down. You can trim these pieces up too, if you need to. And you can write this if you wanted to write it, or you could leave it off altogether if you like. It's almost like it says, hello summer, or hello sunshine, with those pretty little yellow and white flowers. So I like the way that looks. I always check my pieces out to see what else do I want to add, does it need anything else, and in this situation I feel like it needs a little something else. But you can leave it off if you want. I'm just going to make a little swag to go on the top, and I'm using some more of the pieces that coordinate with what was on the inside of the box, and I'm going to place those down here until I get the shape and the look that I like, and I'm going to take a little of this florist wire and this little it comes on a little paddle. I'm going to kind of wrap it around there. And then get it nice and twisted so everything stays together in the middle. You can also use like um, pipe cleaners if you wanted to for this or a twist tie. You could also use zip ties, whatever you want to use. Now I'm going to make my bow and I have this beautiful linen and cotton blend striped piece of ribbon and it doesn't have any wire in it but that's not a concern. I'm going to measure seven inches because that looks like it's going to fit pr 
properly in the middle of that little swag and I'm just going to fold it over a few times on itself just like so so that I have even number of little loops on each side I'll have two loops on the right and two loops on the left and then I'm just going to cut it off and we'll make a separate tail and that tail is going to be about 16 inches long I'm just measuring it so 14 and 14 and then a little bit extra so 15 or 16 inches I guess you could say I'm gonna fold this over and dovetail the ends and this is going to be the tail for our bow I'm gonna just pinch it into the middle folding it over to make sure I'm you know pretty much in the center and I'm gonna pinch that together using a piece of jute I'm gonna wrap it around the middle place it down on the table and then give it a couple of knots and this is gonna hold that pleat in the middle and keep our bow cinched in the middle and nice and shapely now you don't want to make a bow with a ribbon that doesn't have wire in it you don't want to make your loops too big because it'll become too floppy and your little loops won't stand out on their own but of course if you like that look then you just go right ahead and do that we always want to make it our own now I'm just going to tie that right down on top and this is the back of our bow now it should stay in place fine I'm going to reach onto the inside of that bow and pull the top layer up the bottom layer down and I'm just going to fluff that out this is such a pretty ribbon and it just it's very farmhouse to me I think with the neutral colors and the stripes and then the pretty little wildflowers just make it rustic and cottagey so I think it could be a combination for lots of different styles I'm gonna tie it right into the middle of our little swag here and then keeping those jute strings long I'm gonna use that to wrap around the handle on the top you know you could set this on your porch if you have a covered porch you could put it in your house and something like this to me would be so pretty to give to a friend to give to somebody who maybe needs a little bit of you know a little sunshine a little brightness in their day something like this would be so cute now you can go ahead and put a back on there if you want or put the backing back if you had yours originally but I'm gonna leave mine open so the light will shine through and you can see the little flowers better I'm trimming up now this is like my final look at it to make sure I have it the way I want it and then you can just use a little bit of hot glue and glue down those little tails if you would like just like that okay now we're gonna do a kitchen tool wind chime these are also thrifted pieces these are from a canning set they came from Goodwill and then I have a jar lid and I also have some of these old spoons now they all have quite a bit of wear on them and I love that they are already aged we don't have to do any work I'm also going to use a hammer some type of a poking tool or a knife or a narrow screwdriver we're going to use jute I'm also going to use some beads which you will see later I'm going to start off by deciding I already know that I want the smallest little um, I guess we're gonna call it a funnel so we're gonna put the, the smallest funnel on top and we have to have a way to attach that to the one that's gonna be underneath it so I'm just making a hole and then I'm gonna take the bigger one which is what you're looking at now I'm gonna mark it with my little chalk writer so we can put a bunch of holes in here so that our strings and our spoons will hang down from there y'all it is storming outside so if you hear the thunder forgive me I can't even get that out of the video okay so see I have all my markings here I do go back and add one more behind where I just poked the first one I do that later and you'll see that shortly so I'm just kind of drilling into here you might want to put something underneath it so you don't make a hole in your table I'm doing it as lightly as possible until I get in this angle and then I just kind of screw it down a little bit so you can see how we're going to attach it smallest on top the larger one on the bottom and then all these little spoons are going to hang down so now I'm going to take my spoons apart I'm just going to take this little jump ring and I'm going to put it 
right here on the large one and close it back up and I'm going to use a piece of jute and I'm just going to poke it through the hole on the bottom of the smaller funnel and I'm going to tie a few knots in here so that it doesn't slide down through the hole that I just made to feed that jute string through. Does that make sense? So see, we don't want that to go all the way through, so it needs to be big enough to hold it. And then I'm gonna go through that ring on the bottom, and then just tie those together. And then I thought, you know what? Shortly, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. You're, you're gonna see shortly what I do. But you can do it like this if you don't have beads. All right, so here are all of our spoons. And I am just going to, you don't have to do this in any order, you know, you know what a wind chime looks like. They're hanging at kind of a variety of lengths. Some of them are all at the same length. However you wanna do this is gonna be absolutely fine as long as they can make contact with each other when the wind blows so that you get that little sound, the little chime sound. I'm gonna cut my cords off a little bit longer than I'll need, but just to be sure that I have plenty, I'm just gonna make it a little bit longer than I need. We can't add it back, right? But we can cut it off more if we need to. All right. Continue along. Do all your spoons that way. And then this little jar lid is going to be our, I don't know if you would call it like a clapper, kind of like in a bell. There's a clapper in the middle. So I don't know if that's what you want to call that or not, but we're just going to do the same thing. We're going to poke a hole in it and we're going to tie knots to hold it in place because this is gonna be in the center of all of our spoons. It'll give something to hit against. So here are the beads that I've chosen. You can use whatever you want. I know you can get them at Dollar Tree. I just took that knot out. Now I'm gonna retie it with the bead on it and I'm gonna tie it down shorter. You can see what I'm doing. Sometimes it's easier just to watch than have somebody explain it, isn't it? Okay, so you get the idea here. Now we can trim off what we don't need and get rid of that. And this is how that section's gonna look. And then I'm gonna add a bead to each one of the spoons like this, trimming off what we don't need to make it look nice and neat. And then adding a little bit of hot glue on the string above the knot. This is going to keep the bead from moving around and it's also gonna keep your knot from coming undone. Keep in mind, if you're doing this outside, you're gonna to wanna to use Gorilla Glue, or you're going to use some type of E6000 or something like that to hold everything in place because the heat on regular hot glue will cause it to melt. It's just like a silicone, something like that. Um, I don't know what hot glue is made out of, but um, yeah, it just releases in the heat. So you, you wanna be sure that you uh, prevent that from happening with your wind chimes. You don't want them to fall apart. So now I've added one bead here and I'm going to make a same process, gonna trim off what we don't need and slide that bead down. And I'm gonna add more beads onto this strand. So I'm going to tie a few knots and I'm gonna slide the knot as close as I can down to the bead. And I'll do that process with each one of these so that there's a little space in between there. And I think it looks nice. Do this however you want. If you want your beads to be right on top of each other, you can do that. Just keep on going down. I wanna take a minute to thank everybody who has come over from Sammy's channel to come over here and check my channel out. It means a lot to me. Um, you are so welcomed here. I would love to have you as part of our YouTube family. Okay, so now that we got all those beads on there the way we, we want them, feed it through and I put it through the middle hole there and I'm gonna tie a knot and then I'm gonna add another knot on the top of that so that it doesn't slide through. And you can make this as long or as short as you want to. A little glue here underneath the knot, it's gonna hold that in place and 
When we trim it down, it's going to keep it from coming apart or fraying. Now I'm just putting a little bit of cool temperature glue on here and twisting it. Now I have a point so I can easily feed that jute up through there. You know, sometimes jute will fray and it's hard to kind of push the beads and everything through there. You can just use a little bit of hot glue or a little piece of clear tape and you won't have any problem with it. So for each one of these pieces of jute with the spoon on it, I'm going to pull up through there. And then once I get them all pulled through, I'm going to decide how long I want the strings to be. This is kind of a process of holding the strings, lifting it up, looking at it, moving the length down, tying your knot. It doesn't take a long time to do it. It's just, you know, it's just part of it, but I think that it's worth it. And continue along just like this. And then once you get all of your spoons tied on and the little clapper in the middle, you can go through there and trim off whatever you don't want. You can shorten up anything you want to shorten up, which is kind of what I'm looking at here, how long I want those to be. And then trim off and add your glue to each of those little sections underneath the knot. This one needs to be a little shorter, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. That's easy to do. All right, so just finalizing all of these to make sure nothing comes loose. If you had a little bird that you wanted to put in here or a little nest, that would be super cute in that second funnel. But for me, I'm just going to add a little jute bow. I'm just wrapping it around my fingers about mm, probably 10 times and then cut it off. These are going to be the little loops of our bow. I'm going to lay it down and then I'm going to cut. I think I have three or four strands that are about 12 inches long and this is going to be the tails. You can use some type of ribbon here. You can use a little, little florals here. You can use anything you want in there or you could just leave it where the knots are showing you could add more beads in whatever use your imagination what would you put in there now all i'm doing with these little what's going to be our tails is just tying them right around the middle of that little bundle of jute and then pulling them down so that the tails will hang down underneath it and then all you have to do is just fluff out the little loops there to make it a cute little fluffy little bow. I'm going to add that right in the center of where all those knots are and it'll just hang down and when the wind blows it'll give it a little more interest. Maybe catch the wind and spin it a little more. I love wind chimes. My husband's not a big fan but I love them. I like to wake up in the morning and know if it's windy or breezy outside. I can hear it through my the double doors in my room. I really like it. Plus we live in a tornado prone zone you know how it is this is nice to get some warning okay on to the hanging baskets we're going to use some floral foam and some more jute I also have two strainer baskets they have handles on them they are the exact same thing and they are aged they're about 10 inches I am going to cut off a section of my jute Take the bottom of that strainer of one of them, pull it up, going to make a nice thick fat knot with a couple of loops in it, right in the center of one of these baskets. I don't want anything slipping out and it's going to be kind of heavy after we add our florals to it. So you want to be sure that you make that nice and thick. You could also tie a a metal washer on there if you wanted to just to be on the safe side I'm gonna take the handle of the other basket and I'm going to wrap it around the handle and tie it up close underneath and then cut it off you can see how it works here you can add glue under there if you would like to you see how it's gonna look All 
All right, so we're gonna start off with the bottom section. I'm gonna cut some scrap paper. Since this has holes in the bottom, and we obviously do not need holes in the bottom if we're using faux greenery, I'm gonna go ahead and use a little bit of hot glue. This is on my cool temp setting. And I'm going to place this down in that basket. Lift it up so I don't glue it to my table. And this will give us something that we can glue down the foam, the styrofoam to, and help hold it in place. We're gonna do the same thing to the top section. I saved the backings to my stickers and all sorts of things, so I have little scraps of paper all over my table. All right, I'm going to add some glue here and then just put that glued section right on top of the paper. And do the same thing with the top. This is part of a hula skirt. I'm just going to use that, tuck it around my foam here, and then start adding in my plants. These are thrifted florals. This is a really pretty type of greenery. I love this. And I'm just going to add a few pieces. I only have three of them, so I'm trying to balance it because um, these pieces need to be balanced with your florals so that they don't fall to one side or the other you know you'll get what i'm saying when you see the end screen when i show you all the pieces final finally done all right so then i'm going to add some ivy you can add any type of scraps anything that you have the idea in my opinion is to put the pieces that are going to hang down or what you would call the spillers you would want those on the bottom most likely because you can't put too much height because the bottom of the top basket will hit it so the things that are gonna stick up, we can put on the top, just like this. If you don't like the ones I'm using, that's totally fine, just use what you have. I know that um, what you won't see until the end screen is that I did add some succulents in there, just here and there to just really fill it out and give it a little more interest. So just continue along until you have your baskets full. Our last project is gonna be our wood home sign. I'm going to use four little houses in two different sizes, some wooden letters that say home, this beautiful wall sticker from Dollar Tree, some white linen chalk paint, this is a thrifted little sign. I'm also going to use some pavement paint, I'm going to use some sanding pieces, some tint, and some brushes. I'm going to start off by sanding this down. You can use a sanding block or you can sand it by hand. I did take these outside just to make it quicker and use my hand sander. And I got all over the surfaces because they're kind of splintery. I'm going to use some of this beautiful wood tint and I'm going to rub this all over. It did not stain my hands. I washed as soon as I got done and it came off my nails and my fingers perfectly. So yay, yay, yay. Love it. I'm gonna do this all over the entire thing. If you would rather paint your pieces, you can certainly do that. But I love this stain. You could also use your Waverly Wax if you wanted to, except that I'm not sure it would stick very well. Um, I'm not sure if it would stick very well to the window cling later, or the wall cling, excuse me. All right, now we're gonna be painting these because they're not all the same color and I want them white. I'm just adding a little hot glue down to a placemat so they don't move around while I paint them. And I love that idea because I'm not getting chalk paint all over my hands and then fingerprints all over my letters. So I'm just going to go all over the tops and the sides and all around. I'm showing you that I'm doing coating the entire thing and I do give these two coats of chalk paint. Once they're dry, I'm going to distress them with a chippy brush and a little bit of my antiquing wax. And I'm just going to tap that out so most of it is off of there. I want a really dry brush to do this. I don't like my distressing to look muddy. I like it to just look like it's kind of aged. So that's what I'm doing here, and I'm dragging that across the surface so that it hits on all of those edges. You can see here in this close-up that it's getting on the edges, and that's the look I am going for. 
Once I've done that, I'm going to set them aside and let them dry. I'm going to cut down my pieces of this wall sign into the same measurements as the houses. I'm going to cut them down with my rotary cutter and my metal ruler. Just makes it easier. And it's a lot easier to cut it when they're still on their backing than trying to cut them after you've peeled them off. I'm going to take some of my Mod Podge, put it down on the first house, and I'm just going to kind of work in order here. I'm going to start with the end of the sign or the, um, the wall cling, the wall sticker, and put that down and then cover it with Mod Podge and then move on to the next one and do the same thing. And then my Mod Podge. They are adhesive on the back, these wall stickers. Obviously, they're stickers, but they're not going to stick down. Um, they're not going to stick for very long. So using some Mod Podge is going to seal that in and really keep it in place. So here they are, and it's time to let them dry. Once they're dry, fit the pieces back together, and look how gorgeous this is. Very pretty. Now I know that I want to add my letters across here. This is how they're going to look. I'm just going to kind of measure up, and I know that I want them all to be about the same measurement up. So I just use my metal ruler to go through here and measure them and make sure that they are all in the same spots. Very easy. All right, now I'm going to take that pavement acrylic paint. I'm gonna add that onto this black sign. It's a almost like a slate gray color. I really like this color compared to just a black, dark black. So I'm using that here. I'm gonna paint it on all surfaces. Get a nice, good coat. And then once it's dry, I'm going to start distressing it. I'm gonna go over all of the edges like this on each of the ledges, on each of the corners, I'm going to distress this down. And this is how it's gonna look. And this is gonna be the base of our sign. So when I figure out what my center is, I'm gonna start working to hot glue each of these pieces down to my sign. If you wanna have something more permanent, grab your wood glue and use that here as well. I'm gonna work from the end and I have it at this angle because I can see that it is the same distance from the front and the back so that it is centered in the sign. And I'm gonna continue along, lining these up, making them nice and neat, and try not to make a mess with your glue. Make sure that it's kind of in the center of your block so that it doesn't squish out everywhere. We want this to look high end. Okay, so once that is down, I just thought it would be cute to add a couple of greenery picks that look like the greenery in the sticker right to the top of the sign. And these look very, very similar. I'm going to use a little hot glue here and just shoot it right down that chimney, and that's going to hold that all in place. And this is how that sign is going to look. So here is the final look of our four projects. Here's our hanging basket. You can see where I added the, um, the extra greenery to it. And then over here is our beautiful wind chime. We have a little bit of a breeze, but it's very hot today, very hot. I believe in you. I know that we all have a little bit of craftiness and creativity within us. And I don't say that you should do everything like I do it. Do it however you like it. Make it your own. That's what this channel is all about. I would love it if you would subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. And thank you to those who have subscribed. It's always a pleasure to have you here in the comment section. Give me a thumbs up if you like these projects that we did today. Be sure that you check out the link in the description box so that you can go over to Sammy's channel and see my other video there. Tell her that I sent you. Thank you so much for stopping by, and I'll see you again soon. Bye!